Greetings and salutations, my fellow gamers, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Liz Bites, and welcome back to another Fallout 4 Settlement Tour. Y'all seem to like my last video where I toured Fort Nuka, and I decided, well, I got a few more settlements that are all done, and I could consider pretty good and pretty interesting, so I figured, why not do another one? So we're here today, and I feel like by the title of this video and by the location, you can kind of guess what this is about, but if you can't, we're underground now, and if we're underground, that only means one thing, we're talking about a vault. Yep, we're going to be touring my Vault 88 settlement, which inside houses a little bit of an interesting little faction, but you'll have to wait for that. So for now, let's open up the vault. Man, I will tell you, I do really enjoy these vault opening mechanics uh, from this game. They're just, it feels like I'm actually opening something that's been sealed up forever, not something that, you know, it's just like, ugh, whatever. But here we are, Vault 88 opening, and inside is something that I really enjoy, and I think that this is one of the best ideas I ever came up with for Vault 88. I don't know if anyone else uh, did this. I know someone did something similar for Vault 88 for another faction, and it's inspired this one. But, this is, this is a, yeah, an inside Vault 88. You'll see it pretty soon. There is it. Oh, yeah, the lettering's up there. The guards, the ramp is down. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the new institute. <laughs> I probably should explain this a little bit before I go any further. So you may remember in my Fort Nuka video, I said that I was on good terms with all the factions in the Commonwealth. I joined the Minutemen, and I led the Minutemen to victory in the main game, and I left the Brotherhood of Steel alive and the Institute alive, well, no, the Railroad alive. As for the Institute, well, of course, I had to, to destroy them, so how can I be on good terms with them? Well, this is it. This is the new Institute. So before we go any further, I will explain just a tiny bit of backstory. So, in my game, how I like to see it is after I destroyed the Institute, uh, the Institute was gone, all was done, but I did issue the evacuation order before I blew it up. So that means uh, people did get out. Uh, so what happened to them? Well, if you play the game, you know that there is a quest uh, later on in the game, well, kind of a quest, where you can assist in helping uh, survivors from the Institute, uh, just a few of them, uh, find a new home. So I thought, well, hold on, why don't I do that uh, for the whole institute, you know, like, why don't I help those uh, who want, who survived the institute? But then I thought, well, hold on, the institute uh, had some good ideas in there, like, they had some great technology in there that just kind of got, went to waste because the management uh, was evil, like, you know? Bad leadership meant that we lost all that technology, all our progress. So I, as a general, the man thought, well, wait, what if uh, I, me, uh, help the man, man, help the institute uh, rebuild uh, but under the watchful eye of the Minutemen, and therefore came the new Institute. So here in Vault 88, I decided to give Vault 88 uh, to the survivors of the Institute uh, so that they can rebuild uh, under the watchful eye of the Minutemen so that no more shenanigans go on. There are a few rules, but I'll explain those in a little bit. Uh, so for now, let's go and talk about the intro uh, to the Vault. Uh, we have our guard right here. If you can't tell already, they are dressed in full getup because they, they are a synth. They are one of the surviving synths who were serving in the Institute who decided to continue working for the Institute after it was destroyed. They came here of their own free will. They said, hey, I'm a synth. I was working for the Institute and I want to continue working for them. So they said, okay, fine, sure, you can work. So now they stand guard here at the vault entrance. We have two turrets just in case anyone tries anything weird. We have all these crates over here because when you come to the Institute, uh, you have to give up most of your you know, weapons or anything of that sort uh, because we don't want any violence here, of course. But of course, they're kept here so you can get them back you know, and we occasionally get shipments of you new know, Pip-Boys, Vault 88 jumpsuits and all that stuff, which is important, but not as much anymore. I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, so if we look over here, we have a sitting area. So this is where if you come to the uh, new Institute and you want to say work, for the Institute, or you just want to visit uh, the Institute, well, you gotta get checked up first to make sure you're like, you know, you're not some criminal, like some raider or something who's gonna be coming in here and potentially killing everyone. No, you gotta make sure you're a good person. So, you come over here after you enter, and you sit over here. There's plenty of games, and there's some food here, you know, some sweet rolls, some donuts, and some milk and Nuka-Cola just to tide you over, you know, just while you're waiting, so you're not gonna be bored. And if no one's sitting here, this is occasionally a place where a sims or other guards or anything can come here and just kind of relax for a little bit, you know? Take, a, take the mind off things, but yeah. 
We got uh, magazines, we got books, we got holotapes, uh, we got some board games, uh, and even a little bobblehead there. The family, and of course, cigarette cartons, of course, you know. People smoke, it happens, so we want to make sure we have enough. Uh, and, whoa, ho, 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 hold on there. Where are you going? Yeah. Why are you leaving? You may know she's wearing a vault suit. Uh, that will come back into play in a minute. Well, I'll, I'll explain that. But yes, right now, this is our guard standing on duty. She is very diligent. Uh, and I'm very happy uh, with the work she's done. Just keep an eye on the door, okay? You know, actually, for the sake of safety, we'll go ahead and close the door. We keep the door closed uh, pretty much all the time uh, here uh, in the new institute. Uh, just because we don't want anyone coming in. Remember, the institute was basically cut off from the whole wasteland, uh, except for the teleporter. So now that they are, you know, now they're not, uh, they like to keep the vault door closed uh, all the time. Just in case. Uh, So while that's going on, we have a few more places where, you know, you can store your uh, stuff here. Oh, and this. Well, we'll wait for the alarm to go off. Come on. There we go. And... Come on. So it's, it's done now. Thank you. So... Now, once you've been sitting over here for a while and we confirmed through either looking you up or testing you, whatever we have to do to make sure that you are not someone who's going to come in here and cause trouble, you're brought over here where you're given a small cap stash if you are, you know, so you can have a little money to spend, say, because small wastelanders, they don't have a lot of money. So we give them a little caps to spend here, and we also give them a list of rules, which is right here, and of course we take their picture with items here. So we have their ID, so we know what we're looking for. As you can also see, you can't go down this way, and that's the reason for that, so yeah, you get over there. So, now that's all taken care of, we're going to move down here, past radiation scanners, of course. we got to make sure, no, you're not too irradiated. Oh, and we're going to come back over here, and we got two ways to go. We're going to go over here first, because this leads to security. Well, our main security area for the front entrance. This is where, well, our guard's not on duty right now, but this is where he would sit. He has his, you know, his bug bites, uh, buzz bites, a little something to keep him occupied. He has his terminal for writing down information, some notes for the day. And, of course, things get really slow, because we don't always get a lot of visitors uh, who need to be checked out. We have a little TV here, so he can just occupy his time, have a little fun. But, of course, we got drinks. Uh, we have a place we can store all your stuff. Uh, some cigarettes, of course, like I said, everyone smokes here. We got a fan. We have a selection of weapons from 10 millimeters to assault rifles to if things get really crazy, don't worry, we got you covered. We have a missile launcher. Hey, there he is. There's our main guard. He's probably just out on patrol. But yeah, so this is where he would sit. Uh, well, normally he'd sit over here. I don't know why he's. Oh. Oh, but he was, just, he was just getting some water. He was just getting some water. We got some fresh, purified water here. Oh, I guess he's going back on patrol. You know, he always likes to patrol around, make sure everything's going okay. I mean, we are a little slow right now, and the vault door is closed. So, you know, I'd say we're okay for right now. So we're going to squeeze past him. I don't know what you're doing here. We'll talk about you later. But over here, past these hazard uh, stripes, uh, we have one of our main generators. It's actually our backup secondary generator. It's really its only purpose is to power our recruitment beacon. Uh, which is important if we want to get, you know, new people into the Institute. Uh, but yes, this is where we get just secondary power. Because this area is not really used that much, it's kind of empty right now. But if it was busy, we'd have two desks here for someone to fill out paperwork. This is where we keep radioactive waste. Don't worry. And we have some boxes here with more supplies. And if it gets really, really busy and we can't afford to have someone not be here, we usually have uh, shifts. You know, someone will... You know, work on the generator here, and then back here, they can have a little snoo. Just basic, bare necessities, you know. Just so that they can come in here, sleep, and then they can, you know, when, it's their, when their shift is done, they can move over here, sleep, and the other person can go and work the generator. So yeah, this is our secondary generator, but we have a better one later on. So we're going to move out here. Yeah, so this is one of the civilians who comes to the Institute. Uh, we believe, I like to think they're just visitors, uh, you know. They come here to just check out the Institute and all that. Uh, they're welcome. We want to try and be more open with the people of the Commonwealth. Uh, you know, not be so secretive anymore. 
So yeah, so of course we have to have someone come over here and just make sure everything's okay. He's going to get his water again. And is he going to sit down this time? I don't think so. Yeah, I guess he's coming back. So we'll just let him do his back and forth. And you're still here again. Weird. But now we're going to move into the main institute proper. Welcome to the main atrium. As you can see, they tried to kind of bring back a little bit of that main atrium feel from the actual institute by bringing back a lot of greenery and lights. It's still a little dark, but, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, we were able to uh, uh, salvage a lot of stuff from the institute, and some stuff uh, we salvaged from the institute wreckage itself. Some was it was from safe houses for the institute, and then some was actually made here at the new institute to, to try and get that same feeling. But as you can see, they did reuse a lot of stuff that vault tech had lying around so of course you know it still looks like a vault but give it a few generations and soon it'll start looking like the old institute uh, with just a little bit of a vault tech flair you know but before we go over there let's check out the stuff over here as you can see we have a little museum area dedicated to the institute you know we got the institute flag back there we have a gen 1 model synth a gen 2 model synth a gen 2 uh, Armored Synth, and then we have a Corsair uh, unit. These are all actual. These were all found in the wreckage uh, of the Institute uh, with a little bit of touching up just to make them, you know, look a little bit better. This guy basically was, you know, like he is now, so it's okay. A little touching up here and there, but overall, they were, um, yeah, pretty much how it is. We did have a, a spare Corsair outfit, which we did keep uh, and um, put on here, and I do have a few personally myself, but uh, I'm gonna keep those for me, you know. Institute really doesn't need them. And then over here, we have more items. So here we have just some general stuff. This is a cup that was recovered from the Institute. We're just trying to be, you know, we want to, anything we can get from the old Institute, we want to have here. So this is a clean cup. We have a toaster and some mechanical parts. We like to leave this in one of their experiments. We have a authentic Institute lab coat here, you know, very important. Got an Institute flag, of course. Now over here, we have some stuff from Kellogg. We have some of his favorite cigars, his cigar box, some of his implants you can see right there. Yeah, very nice, very good. Here we have Kellogg's actual outfit. I, of course, took this from Kellogg's body after I beat him, and I kept it as a uh, keepsake. I used it as my main armor for a little bit, but now it sits here as a reminder of probably one of the better fusions of Institute technology and human technology in the form of Kellogg. We have his gun right here as well, and here we have his bones. Yeah, we just wanted to make sure Kellogg was remembered here, so we got, you know, his his armor, we got his gun, and we got his bones. Well, some of them. I I, ha I, ha I hacked off as much as I could carry, and then I just brought it back here. The rest is still back at his uh, fort, uh, or whatever. So, yeah, but I feel like this is good. At least he's still being remembered. Uh. Tuesday. Yeah, I got some, and we got, of course, I got some plants. We got a lot of pictures uh, around here. We want to try and classy up this area, make it more like a place where, you know, this is where the future is being built and all that. So we have a lot of pictures around here. This uh, is a statue that we harvested from not the Institute itself uh, or the uh, or what was around here. This is actually taken from outside, which thought it would be nice. And the people of the new institute, uh, I believe, kind of like to see this as a memorial to uh, the uh, many people who died uh, during the destruction of the first institute. Uh, so they conglomerate uh, around here a lot, sit down, and just kind of take a minute to think about all the people who were lost, uh, all the simps and everyone else who was lost. Yeah, they just come to here. Uh, you know, Clem. He doesn't really understand it, so he kind of just goes a little overboard to like stand here, you know, be like, hey, I'm in full support of those here. And, uh, yeah, they don't really, they're kind of annoyed, annoyed by it, but they really can't say anything, seeing as, well, Clem, you can tell, is a vault resident. He wears a vault suit. So I, better, I, I should probably explain that while I'm here. So if someone here is wearing, like, an Institute jumpsuit or a lab coat or just a vault tech lab coat, uh, they are actually scientists, and those who are wearing vault uh, lab suits are actually people who, you know, came from the Commonwealth and joined the Institute uh, after its destruction in order to help, you know, recreate their ranks uh, and things. So yeah, she, uh, our settler here, worked uh, outside and was not part of the Institute, but then she had the recruitment signal saying, you know, hey, we're from the Institute, we're looking for new people, and so she came running. And because of that, she has a pit boy. All those uh, who are either Wastelanders uh, or 
uh, people who were already here before it was new institute had pit boys uh, because their first country said they needed a little bit more than people from the institute. But of course, you know, we have Clem here. Clem is not really scientifically gifted, but because he's not a scientific mind, you know, he didn't really fit in with the Institute, but he was here before them. So, of course, his spot was already secured. So, he has his vault suit to help distinguish him as a vault resident, which means he gets to stay. And he's given a job that kind of fits his criteria, which we'll see in a minute. He's not there right now, I don't know why, but we will see what his job is a little bit later. We have another Minuteman guard here, who comes, you know, yes. just watching over, making sure everything's okay, nothing going wrong, or anything of that sort. So, let's have a quick look at some of the residencies. Uh, for the people's institute. This is one of our standard uh, rooms. It's for people, sometimes it can be for people who are just friends, uh, who, you know, just want a room together. Sometimes it's for married couples who like to, you know, keep things, you know, they want to have enough space for Jesus in there, you know? And maybe they want to have enough rooms for their gnome collection. I don't know, who knows? Of course, lots of pictures and, of course, some technology and scientific posters. So they have a full working entertainment system right here with a television. And, uh, of course, drawers for both of them. And, of course, a bathroom. This is a real thing. Uh, they still have a bathroom. Uh, you know, very bare minimum. A shower, a toilet, uh, and a sink. Uh, but, you know, they got the toothbrushes. got the rat poison. You know, everything you need for a bathroom. Uh, it's pretty good. They have clean towels. That's what they appreciate the most. Clean towels. Uh, and over here, we have another room. Uh, Again, just one of our more standard ones. This one doesn't have a real entertainment area. It's just kind of bare bones. What you see is what you get. They even share a clock, you know. But sometimes you just gotta work with what you got. They got a radio, so that's good. And a fireplace. Yeah, it goes right up into the room above it, but that's okay. And of course, the bathroom. Very bare minimum. I will admit, people. I thought I had fully re uh, furbished everything in this vault, but there may be a few areas that are less furbished than others. But. I want to show you at least one other room we have over here. This is actually one of our visitation rooms. So if you come here and you're not a resident, but you want to just stick around, maybe you're visiting someone who works in the, uh, the Institute, or maybe you're someone who just wants to come around and see if, hey, maybe this is a place for me, or anything else, but you, you know, you don't have a place to stay, you don't have a room, well, here it is. This is our residency area where you can come. This is like a hotel, really. And we got a bed here with a TV, another one near the TV, a uh, terminal you can use with a lot of magazines and holotape games. Got a fireplace, uh, drawers, some rockets uh, to play with, and um, a radio. So basically you got everything you need for like either a quick stay or if you're staying for a little while to visit, you know. You got a little space for you. No bathroom, but there is something for that. We'll come back to that later. Now, before we head over there, let's look at this. This is our general store. It is called Sean's Goods, named after the general of the Minutemen's dear, dear departed son and the Institute's former head, Sean. This is where you can come to buy supplies. Yeah, here at the Institute, you know, even if you are residents, you don't get stuff for free. I don't know how it was in the last... In well, no, in the Institute, you have to pay. So, yeah. Here in the Institute and the old Institute, you have to pay. Uh, this is run by one of our vault residents who... Uh, started the store and it was named by the new residents of the vault all the institute scientists they named it sean's goods to honor him and she has everything you could ever want she's got you know faces flowers the nuke is more decorative than anything it's just decorative it's not actually alive it was salvaged again from the outside we brought it here but yeah they got mr handy they got fuel if you need it uh, extinguishers, telephones. You may see the shelves are a little bare right now, but that's because it's inventory day. You know, we're restocking everything. So sooner or later, we will have everything back in stock. But right now, we're in the process of uh, getting everything back on the shelves. I would hope she'd be doing that instead of just cleaning. It's not even that clean. Come on. But yeah, and of course, cigarettes. Hey, people need to smoke. They go through a lot of stress here, you know? So now back out into the atrium, let's head over here to the cafeteria. You may see up there, looks like the overseer's office, but is it? Hmm. Let's head inside and have a look. All the soda you can drink. I know. That's one of the things that catch from the old uh, vault is that I made it so... Oh, man. Someone flipped over the cafeteria tray. There we go. 
So yeah, this is where you can come get as much soda as you want. We have a bar area with food. Again, we're restocking right now, so everything's a little low. But there's also an area here you can just come and grab food. We got steak, we got stew, we got uh, ribs, we got noodles. Uh, we got everything you could ever want. Uh, it's just first come, first serve. If you're wondering about the slime, that's a bug in the system. I killed a glowing one when I first uh, cleared out the vault, uh, and it, this green slime was all over the ground, and it would not go away. I can't move it. In fact, when I move a tile, it still stays there, um, but the tile moves, so yeah. You can kind of see, like, eh, it's everywhere. We like to think that uh, it's just a decoration. You know, nothing really happened. Nothing got splashed on your food. Go ahead, try some food. It's it, it's nothing wrong with it. It's just a little green slime. So yeah, this is a little area where sometimes residents like to come and work. You know, take a little break. Of course, they can grab some food and some drinks. But yeah, just a nice little cafeteria. Not as good as the old institute, but you know what? They're doing their best. They're doing their absolute best. So that really covers uh, uh, the atrium, except for the upstairs. But we'll cover that when we go upstairs. For now, let's head over here. And we have two ways to go. We're going to save that for right now. Over here is our main reactor. This is what gives us all of our power. These are the most highly advanced generators we can get here at the Institute. And then over here is one of our main uh, areas where you can check on the levels, make sure everything's okay. You, got, you can press the buttons. Basically, standard reactor stuff. There should be someone manning this right now, but apparently they're not here. No one's at their proper place at the proper time. I've known that. That's just a bug when it comes to uh, how I run things here. So, of course, we have some uh, extra fuel tank. These are actually big batteries, uh, which we use to store energy. Just in case the reactors need to power down for a little bit to for maintenance or anything, we still have power in addition to the, the backup generator we have out in the front. This is where we keep our tools and all of our supplies. Over here we got some spare uh, parts uh, and motors over here if need be, and of course we got ladders. Uh, we got instant, we got Minuteman flag uh, up there to remind you that you are part of the Minutemen now. Uh, nothing evil, you're part of the Minutemen. And then over here we actually do have someone in the place, I don't know what this guy is doing here. But here we have some scientists at their stations, uh, you know. Taking down notes, uh, got everything they need, they got some Tesla science here, both to keep them co uh, company uh, while working and of course to just stay off boredom being down this area can be a little boring and then we have one of our scientists here as you can tell he was hired because he uh, it is dressed as a vault uh, scientist but he's picking up new chemicals that can be used to help uh, uh, with the radiation and all of the uh nuclear fuel that's here in the reactor so hopefully make it better you know we can get more power out of these generators never thought i'd be an honest to goodness vault dweller Hmm. Yeah, good for you, man, but you really should be at your post right now. Well, I don't know what you're doing out here. So yeah, he's working hard. He's got all the ingredients he needs to make something great. Uh, so let's head out of the re reactor now. And we're actually going to head upstairs. So we got a little thing up here. This is the bunk area where if you're working, uh, um, you know, if working here on the reactor or any one of the other local areas, maybe like maybe you're working in food generation or something, this is where you stay. This is basically the lowest level of where you can stay here in the vault, or in the new institute as we like to call it, because you got nothing. You basically got a mattress, you got some storage, and you got a dresser with, with a clock. Oh, bottle caps. Don't mind if I do. Anyway, I may have just stolen someone's bottle cap stash. <laughs> But yeah, this is where you stay. You can work your way up to a nicer one, though we are trying to get a nicer bed set up for all of the um, people working here. But yeah, this is bottom of the bed. I mean, you're right by the reactor, so, you know, not really the best place to be with all the noise. But of course, you do get their own bathroom with a urinal. I know if you want to be quick. And a shower. And a working sink. Pure water. You know, speaking of water, you're probably wondering, where do we get our water? Well, that's where we're heading next. We're just going to head all the way down here, and we turn right. Oh, oh, hold on. I think, yeah, that's going to be the person who is supposed to be over here keeping an eye on the levels. So we'll just take a quick look here as she takes her post. So as you can see, she is actually an institute scientist. She actually worked in the actual institute on the reactor, which is why she's working here. She's actually the head of the reactor area, and like I said, her job is to monitor all this and make sure the reactors are cool, calm, and they're giving us the power we need. So she's on the case for that. 
And the two subordinates back here are not, they are from the surface. Um, except for this one right here, she is from the Institute as well, because she is wearing an Institute lab coat. Uh, but yeah, like I said, we're going to move down here, and we're going to find out where we get our water from. So down here and through this door, which leads us into this tunnel, this will be one of the few areas in the in new Institute that isn't uh, been converted to a vault tech uh, uh, looking area, just because of uh, excavation. And there is something over there, but we're going to come back to that in a second. Uh, first, welcome to our water filtration area. This is where we get all of our water from for our underground reservoirs, and up here is our water treatment center and testing facility. So as you can see, we have one of our scientists right now, just taking his little coffee break, but his job is to monitor all yeah. of our water and to make sure that nothing is going wrong with it, but also to find ways to better treat the water. It's used to see if we can add any nutrients into the water to help it, uh, you know, both ourselves and the world around us. Maybe we can use it to help, you know, clean the wasteland by using purified water with chemicals in it. Uh, that sounds a little John Henry Eden, but I swear. With our guidance, they're doing the right thing, they're doing a good thing. We have what, all these barrels right here is for water storage. If something goes wrong, like say our pump needs to be repaired or something, we can store water in here and we can still have water to use for a while while it's down. These are all of our monitoring and controls here for our water pump. This is where, you know, our mate, our two heads, uh, one of them's out right now, so it's usually him and someone else. Uh, they can sit here and type up their reports, uh, they can make phone calls if they need to, check on reports printed for them. One of them has a little bit of a Mentat problem, I'm not going to say anything because it helps them out, you know. But we're going to overlook that, the little Mentat issue, and we're just going to be happy that we have pure purified drinking water. Isn't that right? Uh, oh yeah, these are more storage tanks where we can store water, just in case something happens. Uh, as you can see right now, yeah, it's radiated water, but when it comes out anywhere else in the Institute, it's purified. Uh, this are, we have a separate power generation system because, because water is so important, we don't want it to, if something happens to our main reactor, we want to make sure that our water pump is still working. Of course, if something wrong, if something goes wrong with this one, we actually do have a way to connect our main generator to the water pump. So, of course, we will have fresh water either way, but just in case one of them goes out, uh, we're good. Now, you may notice that open door on our way down here. And they're probably thinking, what is it? Well, that's simple. We go through here, we have another generator again, and over here... A little radiation area. We have a doctor here looking at radiation samples. We have anti-radiation yes. medicine with Radex. We have a little place here we can get it pumped into you if you need to lie down. And a generator. But what for? Well... This actually works? No, it doesn't work. Well, normally this is supposed to work and actually open and close the door. We have a decontamination area here. If you're asking why, well, I'll tell you. Because we step through here, through this radiation arch, which will also scrub radiation from us. You may recognize this place. This is where we get radiation uh, material, radiation material from. Turn it off. Oh, he's trying. Oh yeah, he's on his break, I guess. But this is where we usually get all of our radiation material from. As you can see, it's not really radioactive anymore. We mined out all the radioactive material in this area, and now we are actually doing work down here. Welcome to our expansion project. This is going to be the newest area of the new institute. Much like the old institute, we are trying to expand our operations and get more out there. This has been an area that has been recently cleared. We haven't moved any materials or... Uh, yeah, it's a little radioactive still, so we really can't go down here. But as you can see, we are working to get it uh, cleared out. And once it is, we'll move material and the uh, working machine, uh, your know, operation machines. Uh, construction vehicles ugh, down here but we've already done that for this area so of course we have moved in we are do we have our cranes here we are doing ignore that we are doing whatever we can to find more space to build more facilities so that we can expand and continue our operation and yeah right now it's very bare basic but we haven't really done a lot of work down here we're just kind of clearing it out uh, you know of all the you know creatures and all of the uh, weird things that we, we had a Depth claw on us back here, but it's all good now. It's all gone. And we don't really have anyone down here right now because, you know, we are still worried about uh, 
uh, some of the, you know, in case some kind of creatures come back, like rat scorpions or death claws again, we want to make sure we're ready. And so, we're just kind of putting this on pause right now, but all the equipment is still here. We have precautions, warning signs, all that. And of course, we come into any contact with radiation. Normally, what should happen is this door should close. I don't know why it's not. And then you can get uh, scrubbed here. And if it gets really bad, we have Radaway, Radax, you can take a little break down here. And again, it's a separate power generator, just so that if anything happens, uh, you know, we can still close the area off. So if a Death Claw comes by again, or another Rad Scorpion, we're ready. So yeah, that is everything at this end of the Institute, but there is more to see. Uh, a lot more, actually. So we're gonna head back to the main area. And we're gonna head upstairs to the atrium. Oh, the upstairs of the atrium. And we're gonna see everything that's up there. Start over here and work our way up. Now, of course, oh wait, first thing first, we have our main security area. You know, at a place like the Institute, we want to make sure everything is going well. You know, we don't want any troublemakers. We don't want anyone who gets me a little bit too drunk or something. So this will be our main area where we make sure, you know, everyone's following the rules. Uh, and everyone's off duty right now, of course. Again, it's just more of a thing where the game won't allow me to do stuff. Uh, rather than, I didn't want to put anything here. We have weapons, of course we have a railway rifle we need to, automatic rifles, plasma, we have a focus institute rifle, one of the few institute guns that we actually were able to salvage from the main institute. Of course, most institute scientists have them, but we have a few here just for general use if need be. So this is where everyone would be, uh, sitting down, taking notes, everything, they have all the files, we have radio, but it's rarely on because we want to make sure. This is where our head of the department sits, this is their desk. Like I said, everyone here is uh, pretty much a smoker. They have to be if they are working in this area. But don't worry, we keep them all well fed. We have plenty of donuts here and cup of joes for them, uh, just in case they need it. Uh, and this is where this is our main head of security for our jail cell area. He is a former courser who runs the area. Doesn't need much here because he's just kind of keeping track, but he does have a place where he can keep notes uh, if he needs to. Motivational signs all over. And yeah, this is where we would keep uh, someone Say if they were rowdy for a night or something, and they just need to kind of sleep it off, this is where they'd stay, under the watchful eye of our courser. And if that's not enough, we have two Assault Trons in the charging bays, ready to go, if someone gets way too rowdy and the courser can't take care of it. But yeah, that is our, basically our main security section. Maybe we should put up a sign there for that. And that is it on this side. But now we move to the opposite side, where we have a few interesting uh, locations. Now one, of course, is our residency. So remember how I said earlier how some people come here and they sleep, and sometimes people come here and we have, we have a hotel for them, and sometimes we have just like regular small rooms for people who do live here. Well, this is one of our few family suites. Uh, so of course we have two, uh, two institute scientists with two children, so this is where the children sleep. They have plenty of toys, dresses for both of them, uh, ship models and radio, a nice little area where they can come down and sit and read their stories, some music, they have a little family area where they can come watch TV with a fireplace, nice drawers, and this is one of the few starting institute beds. Yeah, ignore that chuch ch for now, but this is our main institute double bed and a little storage area, and they have their own bathroom. This one's a little bit larger, and the shower is missing. I did, I remember I had to, I had to uh, reload a lot of my old uh, mods because the uh, uh, the update, that next gen update kind of wiped out a lot of them. So yeah, there should be a shower here. I'll have to put that back in later. But yeah, a uh, big old bathroom uh, with shelves if they want to add some stuff, you know, soap, uh, towels, medicine, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, that's our main family suite. Uh, and then next to it, uh, we have... Another area where, if you know, for, for single people who just want a place to sleep, uh, this is their room right here. We got four little beds with tables and lamps for them. We have four dressers so they can put all their clothes in. A nice little TV area. Very bare bones. They don't need a lot because they're mostly working. Either that or they're new. Sometimes people are just new. So maybe you'll have like one or two people here from the actual institute, and then other two will be new recruits who are brought in. But just like the others, they have down here. 
their own bathroom. This one actually had to shower, though it seems still look. I'm still missing a lot of stuff. But yeah, you all know. You all know. But still, they have a sink, they have the shelves, they have a toilet, anything you could need in a bathroom. But now, this is the big one. You see, that's the overseer's office, and down here is the overseer's uh, tunnel that leads to the office. Now you're probably wondering, I, am I the leader of the institute? The new institute? No, I am not, uh, because I'm the leader of the Minutemen, I don't have time to. So I need someone who would actually take care of the institute, someone who could lead them to where they needed to go, and be there for them, and, you know, cheats them right from wrong, and focus them on science. Not being evil, but science. Someone I could trust. Someone who deep down in my heart, I think you all know, I love. But who could that be? Who could I trust to run the new institute? Well, there's only one option for that. And down here in the office, we can... Oh, they're not here. Okay, well, we'll find them in a minute. But this is the uh, the, the director's office, as you, can, as you can see. They have their own workstations where they can get their work done. And this actually may be a hint to some of you as to who the new leader of the Institute is. We'll come back to them. Here we have a T, sorry, an X01 power armor, which should have the Institute, the minute, the, 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 sorry, the, 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 Institute paint job. But unfortunately, a mod conflict again took it away, so I don't have that. But this is actually a personal project of the director of the Institute. They're working on it right now. They have their chemistry station over here for them to do chemistry work. They have their main terminal right here, which is left over from uh, when the overseer of Vault 88 was here. And now it's their main desk. And here we have... Sorry. This is uh, Sean's outfit. I salvaged this uh, from the Institute right before I blew it up. I sold it off Sean. D don't d don't ask me how I did that. So, yeah, this is actual outfit. It's not really sentimental to the new head of the Institute, but it's sentimental to me. And because of that, I thought the, the director of the Institute should have it. So now it's here. Plus, they thought it was better having it up here than having it uh, down where anyone could see it. Because I feel like a lot of people from the old Institute would, you know, kind of conglomerate on this item and want it to be, like, more for them, if anything. And I feel like it should be, uh, our son, my son should be honored but uh, he should not be memorialized the way he was because he was kind of evil, you know. But I still love him. He's still my son. They have a little sitting area there, so if you want to entertain guests. Uh, hmm, not here yet. Maybe I have to take a nap and see if they come back. Uh. But this is their bedroom for the new director. They have their own little music player. They have two guns. Again, one of the few, few of the uh, Institute rifles actually survived, so it's good they actually have two of them. A nice fireplace. Uh, Store it, a nice uh, pre-war double bed. Uh, and their own large bathroom. Uh, of course, with shelving, shower, anything you need. Uh. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sleep here uh, quickly. Let's say I'm going to sleep till morning. So that's about uh, 12 hours plus one. Wait, usually nice. So that'd be 21. 21 hours. Wow, I'm sleeping for 21 hours. Uh. Well, maybe if this, uh, there we go. It's a little slow, but I do want you guys to see who the new head of the Institute is. Uh, because they, I trust them to lead the Institute uh, into the future. They're smart, they're kind, and most importantly, uh, they are, I think, the perfect uh, combination of uh, the outside world and the Institute. Uh, and something else, but we'll wait till we actually, uh, Let's see if they're here. Oh! Oh, no, she is! Oh, she was! Ah! Ah, okay, hold on. There she is. Uh, we'll just, you know. This is delicious. It, here she is. This is new head of the Institute. Hi. Do you need something, monsieur? Uh. How are you doing? I must confess. I am missing you. I yes. hope you've come so we can oh. travel again oh. together. Hint, hint. Oh, she's adorable. But yes, uh. Never mind. As you wish. This is the new head of the Institute, Kiri. Kiri was chosen because, again, she is in a synth body, which means she's from the Institute. She has traveled extensively 
with me and is my wife uh, in this playthrough. So she's from the Wasteland, but also she was raised in Vault 81. I believe, what's that? Yeah, it, Vault 81. So that means uh, that she is part vault Tech too, which means she knows uh, how to handle experiments. Uh, she is the perfect uh, head for the Institute, and she is its new leader. Of course, she's dressed in vault Tech, uh, uh clothing because, of course, she, she came from a vault uh, when she was a Miss Nanny, and uh, because she was not part of the original Institute, she became the head of it as assigned by me because I thought she would be the perfect person to lead it. And... If you remember, there was a... I'll go back to it quickly so you can see. You can see there was a Miss Nanny robot here. This was actually Curie's original body. I kept it after she got transferred to her synth body. And I decided to put it here for her as a little reminder. So every day she can look at it and see how far she's come. From being just a Miss Nanny robot to being a synth leader of the new institute it is a something i think that she will always look fondly on to see like i i'm so much more than what i used to be i was this and now i'm all this so yeah like i said this is her personal project she wants to try and make it safer she's actually making it for her husband so you know that nothing will happen to him outside in the wasteland she says a good wife uh. but yeah so that is uh, the director's office and our new director, Curie. But we still have a little bit to go. There's still a lot more. This is just the, the top part. So let's go through here. As you can see, we have, well, someone waiting around here. Don't know why they are, but this is the recruitment office. So, it, like I said, if you come to the Institute and you want to be a part of it, they have to make sure that everything is okay, that you pass all the tests, that you're not here to cause trouble. And this is the area where you do it. Uh, they have a lot of files here on people from the Commonwealth, which was gathered from the old Institute, uh, which we managed to collect uh, from a lot of their uh, files that we downloaded beforehand. So before we, we destroyed the Institute, we downloaded a lot of their files, and we made sure that any about, you know, surveillance and stuff was kept so that they could make sure that anyone who comes into the Institute is a good person. Now, who runs this office? Well, he's not here right now. But, let's see if we can find him, and I'll point him out. Maybe he's, uh, at breakfast. No... Well, I can't seem to find him right now, so I'll just say, it is actually Clem. Clem is the one who is recruiting people for the Institute. Now you may think, why Clem? Isn't Clem a little, yeah? Well, because he's a good people person. We actually found out he actually does well with people. He talks to them well, and so once they, you know, once they checked up their files and everything, they're brought down here from the main entrance, sat down, again in one of the few surviving institute uh, pieces of furniture and uh, we grilled them we talked about everything what they want from the institute what they want to do well uh, basically you just sit down here and we talk if everything turns out well he types a report gives it to uh the overseer or in this case the director aka curie and she says her final yes or no on whether or not someone can join the institute uh, oh yeah it's a little weird getting up uh, but yeah, that is Clem's job, and that's our main recruitment area. Now, we're going to go all the way down here, and we're going to go deeper inside the Institute. Because, yeah, we've seen a few things like water filtration, uh, energy protection, all that kind of stuff. But we haven't really seen a lot of the things that the Institute's working on. So we're going to do that. We're going to head down to our first area here. And look at uh, our first main area of interest. Welcome to the Robotics Lab. Now, of course, the Institute is well known for their synths, which are robotic uh, originally, and then they became more bioorganic, but they were still robots essentially to them. And as part of the new Institute, we made a law, the Minutemen did, that the Institute could no longer produce synths because they, of course, we don't want to risk them using them for infiltration, surveillance, all that kind of stuff again. And because we see, in the Minutemen, we see Institute uh, uh, synths, uh, all synths really, as people. So we don't want to discriminate against them. So we were like, look, no more making a sense. You know, we don't want you to do any more of that. But the Institute didn't want to give up on their robotics research. So they decided to make a whole new area dedicated to solely robotics. No bioorganics, nothing, just robotics. Right now, they're working on a new model of SentryBot, uh, which we have thanks to our many robot crafting stations. 
uh, I will say for making this, I just use a typical robot workbench, and then I place a... Uh, basically what it's supposed to be is a statue of a sentry bot in standby mode. I place it right on there. And occasionally, I had a mat here that had an animation where someone would come along and like start welding in the area. But again, not a lot of people come down this far. I don't know why. Most of them just try to conglomerate in the main atrium, which kind of really annoys me. It's like, couldn't Bethesda have found a way to make sure that if you're going to build this far down in Vault 81, that people can actually get this far down? I don't know. That's just me. But yeah, of course, we have the two people who work in here. They have the terminals, they have reports, uh, again, cigarettes. Everyone needs cigarettes down here. Some Tesla science, some storage boxes. Uh, they're doing some work right now that you can kind of remember. This is one of Sturgis's, uh creations. They're trying to figure out how it works. Uh, so they can tr uh, see, you know, hey, can we improve on it? Can we take it down? Like, what can we do with it? Uh, Sturges uh, need not know what they're doing. We, of course, have a little workbench right here, and more. They're trying to work more on something for, uh, for the main reactor area. They're doing a little help here by working on a, a piece of the reactor with a few coarser chips as well. They have uh, terminals here where they can write down their progress. And then over here... Welcome to the shooting rings. This is where they test out the effectiveness of the new robots in terms of how well they function in a battle scenario. They set up this little training area here where you can just come out. You can shoot some cardboard dummies and see how effective it is. You can see I'm doing pretty well. We have a little storage over here, and then a uh, protection on here. Again, just in case something happens, say one of the robots goes rogue or something, or someone breaks into the Institute and they, you know, get this far down, well, we have protection against that. Uh, if the sentry bots weren't already enough. Uh, but yeah, that is our main robotics work area. So now we're gonna come down this area here, turn, and as we turn this corner here, we come to our greenhouse. This is where we cook all of our food, or prepare all of our food. Uh, the Institute, mostly vegetables, but we occasionally do trade for meat from the outside. This is our main director's uh, area, where you know they can come down here and type up notes uh, about research reports for all of the new uh, crops we're growing. We do some experimentation. We're trying to grow some experimental plants, you can see here. Seems to be growing well. Yes, it is. And we have these little things here. Again, these were actually built here uh, to mimic the ones that were seen on the Institute. Uh, just to make sure, you know, so we're trying to get back to the Institute look to it, uh, but it's going to be a while. So we're still using a lot. This is a, uh, again, just another desk here for someone wants to write up reports who isn't the director. They can come down here and just write them up. And then these are all of our crops here. We got all of our tools. And then we have, of course, we have corn. We have tomatoes. We have uh, razor grain. And we have some mute fruit. This area, for some reason, I can't plant anything. Makes it a little hilly. But yeah, this is our main area for growing crops. This seems a little small, but this is actually pretty much enough to feed everyone at the Institute. We don't have that many. We only have about 32 people here at the Institute. Uh, so, yeah, this is plenty to feed all of our residents. So, uh, come down here. You may see Exit Zone down here. Well, there's reasons for that. We could go down here and see what else is here. But we're actually going to go down here first and check out the Exit Zone. Because just through this door... We have another vault door. It's one of those old school classic vault doors. This is here because of something very special. Because we go through here. Couldn't really build much down here, so I decided not to build anything. But we go down this little uh, stone cave down here. See which little area. We haven't done anything with this. This is mostly just uh, like an extra area that we haven't really talked about. This is like the bowels of the old institute. Uh, and we come up to this little area here. This is another way to get down here, of course, but the reason we have a door uh, down here for that, we'll come back to later. So let's head back uh, to the door. Again, we'll come back to this in a minute. Uh, we're gonna do another. We're just walking in a big circle essentially. But as you can see, this is like one of those classic uh, vaults from the old games. Uh, vault door and you go through a cave and all that. 
Oh uh, yeah, this is what I wish the doors uh, in the uh, Fallout TV show were like. Uh. Ooh. Ooh. That was weird, a little glitch there. So yeah, now that's in care, we're gonna go down the right hallway here. And there's not much down here, because it's mostly just a lot of uh, caves and tunnels that I built inside of. But, uh, eventually, after a few twists and turns through the hallway, we come to a staircase. And on the left here is... Welcome to our main power armor department. Now, of course, the old institute didn't have power armor, but they originally were going to have their own suit of power armor. So I figured that because they don't have sense anymore as their main fighting force, the institute decided to uh, go for power armor instead. And so they developed a power armor department uh, to build and study power armor. As you can see right here, they have some Enclave Hellfire power armor that they're looking at right now, they're repairing it, seeing what makes it tick, and seeing how they can improve upon it. Over here, after all these extra tools they have, and of course the terminal to write down reports, we have another suit of Hellfire Power, but this is thermal, they're trying some different coatings to see if it'll work. And then, oh boy. Here is some suits of T-60 Power Armor from one of their enemies, Brotherhood of Steel. They're again trying to see how it works, Trying to see if they can find any weaknesses, uh, which they don't know. Just above the breastplate, uh, single shot will take it out. Uh, and uh, trying to see how they can use this against the Brotherhood if need be. Remember, the Institute, uh, this new version, is not in any kind of conflict with any of the other factions. Because of the Minutemen, all factions are on a ceasefire, but we're trying to be friends uh, basis. Uh, so, as you can, so they're not trying anything active, but they just want to make sure if something does go wrong with the Brotherhood and they come after them, that they have something they can use to defend themselves. But yeah, they got a bunch of tools being- they're working on them right now. Some extra radiation canisters, reactive material. And yeah, that is our power armor department. Originally I was actually going to have this be a pool area, but I just could not make it work. So I decided just to make it a power armor station. Figured they needed it since they don't have stints anymore. Now, if we go down here and turn a few corners, we find a door. And what's behind this door? This leads up past this wall to a cave entrance. And we go down. We're back in that room we saw before. So you're probably thinking, well, what's down here? What's up here? Well, I'll show you. Past this little storage area we have down here. It's not really used for much. But up these stairs. Welcome to our secondary store. This is the one that's actually connected to the surface at University Point. And we use this so that people can come and purchase goods from the Institute without actually having to go all the way to the Institute. This is our little... Uh, area here on the surface, a little connection to it, and we have a Braxel cleaner. Okay, we're doing kind of inventory right now and reshelving everything, so not everything is here, but uh, you know, we still have some supplies for sale. And what is the name of this location? Welcome to Father's Goods. Uh, this is again named by the people of the Institute, they wanted something to remember, you know, their leader, and of course, we all knew him as Sean, but they knew him as Father, so this is now Father's Goods. Uh, Place we can again buy some stuff. We got a new cola. We're gonna leave that. If you want to get a drink of some fresh water, we offer free samples to anyone who wants them. And we have a lot of items for sale normally, but again, we're we're restocking right now. But you can buy uh, you can buy a television that works. How often do you have that with it? And yeah, this leads all the way to the Commonwealth. We have some toys for sale, and we have a bathroom, of course, if you need to go. Very simple. And also, I got rid of that creepy statue that was over here with the weird eye. Yeesh. Originally, I had all this uh, cleared out, but for some reason, it didn't stick. I don't know why. But yeah, this is just our secondary store. Not really going on right now, and I can't have anyone working it either, because no one comes down this far. It sucks, but it is what it is. But now, let's make our way back to the Institute proper. Yeah, I kind of gap up there, but I couldn't build that high up. 
Then I'm probably thinking, what I have just a normal door here, but a vault door for the other one? Well, I figured that, you know, I can't, I couldn't, you know, s properly secure every door. So I basically secured what I could. I could secure that door right down there, but not this one. But, you know, we're right by the power armor department. If someone tries to break in through this way, we're, we're covered for that. But that's not the only exit we have here. Now, occasionally I do have these windows out here so you can check out the rocks and all that kind of stuff. So you got a little bit more uh, naturalistic looking uh, scenery besides just walls of this. And down here we have, ooh, this is one of my favorite areas. Welcome everyone to the clinic. This is our main clinic for the new institute. Well, so over here, we have, of course, a Minuteman flag. We are part of the Minutemen. We're all part of the Minutemen now. Well, little sitting area in case you need to wait for someone. Radiation detectors. We don't want anyone coming in here and getting anyone more sick with radiation poisoning. Of course, we have some donuts here. So if you're, you know, you're hungry when you come in, you can have a little bit of a bite to eat. Or if you're working here, you can have a little bit of a bite. This is our secretary's area where she has store things. She has a little fan, some radio, and some holotapes. Over here we have some beds where it's probably, I think it's like short term uh, stay. Like say if you're gonna be staying here for like a night or something. Yeah, you'll place over here. Everyone gets a free jumpsuit to put on just in case their clothes need to be washed with germs. These are all sanitized so that they're all clean. We have an IV back stand just in case you need to have some IV drips put in. Plenty of water. You gotta have water if you wanna be healthy. And over here, is our main bathroom. We have a little shower here. Do you need to be disinfected or you just need a shower? And we do have two toilets. I don't expect, I don't expect people to be using it at the same time, but you know, sometimes you have to make sacrifices. And honestly, I probably should put stalls uh, here, but you know, it's fine, it's whatever. But of course, plenty of clean towels, whatever you need. And we also have a wheelchair here if anyone needs it, uh, just in case. Uh, so moving out, uh, we will be in the mirror now. This is where you can get some minor work work done you can have yourself checked out uh, quickly if you feel like oh hey i feel like i got something stuck in my ear or like my throat's a little chalky you know something like that they'll set you down here and they'll have a quick look at you so look at the again you're part of the minute man storage for clean linens uh, and towels uh, here another wheelchair this is for more a little bit more long term uh seating here so like you have this is mostly for, like institute uh Civilians who are going to be here for a while, so we have Fresh Institute uh, clothes, uh, and of course clean beds uh, for all of them, and IV drips, and a little bit more festive lighting. We have some over there too, but it's really festive over here. These are some gurneys we have, if we ever need them. Over here is where our main uh, head of the clinic sits in, you know, out in the open, if anyone has a question, or just in case they're really needed. We got a terminal with a local newspaper, some books. Uh, we have a little examination, an NPC uh, scanner. And then over here, all everything they have hearts uh, and brains for study. Uh, they can make or examine medicine if you need something, uh, right there in reach. If you're feeling a little, oh, I just got shot or something, a little medex, a little stim pack, uh, you'll be fine. If you need to, like, if anything's going a little too fast, you had a little bit too much cup of joe, jet, slow you down. Yeah, that's basically everything you need uh, uh, right here. But now we have these two rooms over here. First off, we have the long stay room. So, excuse me, Whew, too much air getting sucked in. Anyway, this is our long stay room. Say if you just recovered from surgery or something like that, or you're uh, really, really trying to recover from a disease, uh, this is where you'd stay. You have a little, a nice bed here, a lot nicer than the other ones. You have a TV, you have a place where you, your friends and family can come sit and visit you. You have nice pictures on the wall, like a little key cat, uh, if you look at, uh, or a nice moose. Uh, you know, this is just a nice long-term stair area, a little sterile, but you know, it's fine if you're trying to recover, just in case you need to. Now, I said recovering from surgery. That's because uh, right over here we have our main surgery room. This is for like minor surgery, like say, like say, they say you have something stuck in your ear, they need to go in there and dig it out. Uh, you can be over here. Let's say uh, you know you got uh, uh, so, some wood stuck in uh, stuck in your neck, and they need to pull that out. Uh, they can do that over here too. Uh, got a few X-rays up here from some of the people who came by to have their bones looked at. Uh, but then over here is our main surgery uh, theater. We have a plenty of lights to see what you're doing. 
you got either menace on either side, so we have some drills, we have some stim packs, we have blood bags, we have scalpels, and we even have some teeth that were taken out of someone who uh, got attacked by a mole rat. So yeah, you can de you'll be well taken care of here by our expert doctors. Uh, and we have our little mascot here, a little vault boy with a needle. Ugh, ugh, I feel better already. And of course, lots of water. Mm -hmm. I could use some water right now. But yeah, that is our main clinic area. So, we're going to move out of the clinic right now, and down here, as you can probably tell from the sign, is another exit area. But what's down this way? Well, I'll show you. We're going to move down this way. Very nice, very nice. We're going to go down this hallway. As you can see, we reach a subway station. And there's nothing down here because... As you can, if we go down this way, ignore all that, that was just to cover up something that uh, happened. If we go up this way... We'll find... An exit... To the Commonwealth! Because this is our escape route, you know? We can't just teleport out if something goes wrong uh, here at the New Institute. So... We have an emergency exit here, so if anything attacks, if anything is coming our way, we can go out this way, find a way out. No one's gonna know that uh, you know the, inst the institute is located under this manhole cover, so we're fine. No one's gonna come looking for us this way, and even if they did, say they found this area and they decided to come in through this way, that's what the door is for. It's to make sure no one can break through. And there is a, there's another entrance over there, but again, we're going to ignore that for now. We're going to go back through. And nearby is another area of interest. Well, we go up this way. And around the side here, we will find... Our main classroom area. Of course, here at the Institute, we want to give our children the best education possible, and even we have to offer classes to some Wasteland uh, students as well. So if, they, if their parents want them to have an education and do better for the world, they can send them here to the Institute, and we will actually uh, take them in, and we will give them room and board uh, and food uh, if they want to send the children here to learn. Uh, you know, that's how generous we are. We want people to come in. And if they pass with flying colors, they'll be offered a spot here in the Institute as a scientist. Uh, if they if they so choose. If they want to become a scientist. We don't force anyone to come to work at the Institute anymore. No, no, no. It's an option to work here. This storage we have, we are studying cameras. Uh, and we have to practice our typing skills, of course. Uh, we have globes, uh, both old and new. I don't know what happened to that one. It's looking a little weird. This is our main teacher's desk where he has plenty of holotapes uh, for uh, lessons and all that. We, this one, I assure you, this one's not active. It is not active, I'm telling you. It's just there to show uh, students how it works. Uh, so they know about nuclear fusion. Or fission in this case, I believe. Of course, we have Minuteman flags because this is a Minuteman settlement now. Yeah, Surface Never, Vault Forever. This is just, again, this is more like... Hey, kids, this is what the past looked like. They were so uh, fearful of the surface, but you're, some of you are from the surface, so, you know, it's all good. This is our main chalkboard. We are learning about wasteland culture this week. We ha we're learning about the Brotherhood of Steel, Vault Tech, because we live in a vault, of course. We're looking about Nuka-Cola and its many different flavors. The Minutemen, even some local, well, not local, but newer factions like the Children of Adam. We are trying to teach them all about wasteland culture and how we can all come together to make a better wasteland, you know? The teacher will teach from here. They got the chalk, teach the whole class. They have their lockers back there to store items. This is just some more technology here. I use, honestly, just to fill up space. We have a vault -Tec, uh statue that was left over from vault -Tec when they were here, and uh, we decided just to put it here. Now, what's through here? Well, not everyone who, every kid who is in uh, the Institute is old enough to go to school, but they still need to be taken care of. So through this door, 
We have the daycare center. This is where children who haven't, who can't go to school just yet, this is where they come to play, to be taken care of. We have plenty of holotapes and books to teach them, read to them, so that they will have everything they need. But when they go above ground one day, or if they decide to stay here, Main storage, mostly for toys. We have cribs here for those little ones who need to take a nap. We have Vault Girl watching over them, of course. Changing areas. And then, this is the only area that's shared by both the uh, daycare and the school. Which is a bathroom. Uh, and you come in here, go to the bathroom. Unfortunately, again, I, I put stalls in here, but I didn't put doors. So, uh, that's, um, <laughs> that's my bad. But... Still, plenty of room to come here and go to the bathroom if you need to, with sinks, it's all good. And that is the school. But, we're not done yet. No, 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 no. We still have a few more areas to look at, so we're gonna go down the hallway again. Winding through. Ah! Yes, this. So this is an area where, again, I decided to leave a lot of it open out to the wasteland, so you could, well, out to the cave, so you have a little bit more to see than just a uh, blank wall. You can have a blank wall of granite. Uh, see? So good. And, oh yeah. So, this mole rat, he isn't dead. No, no. Uh, this is our pet mole rat. He's the only one of the mole rats uh, who were here when we started building the vault up that did not attack us. So we decided to keep him around. We named him uh, Insty because you know after the institute. So this is Insty the mole rat. He's uh he's taking a nap right now. He likes to take a nap over here because this is where the bodies of a lot of his uh, brothers are. You know there were a lot of mole rats in this area when we. Uh, when we start building. So yeah, this is where they lie now. So he likes to come down here and take a nap with them to remember them by. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. So now we go around this hallway here. And this way we come to another exit area. This is this exit area here actually goes to that other hallway uh, that we saw at the subway station. There are two cave entrances. The other one leads to this door right here, which is sealed up. We're not gonna bother going through it because we already know it's on the other side. But now, we gotta go down here, and we're about to loop back around, I believe. Yes, we are. We'll go down this area here. As we turn this corner, we're gonna head upstairs. And here we have the main casino area. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why do we need a casino area in the Institute? By the way, again, here at the Institute, we don't discriminate based if you're a ghoul or not. You know, if you're a ghoul, you're welcome here. Anyway, so you're probably thinking, why do we need a casino? Well, originally, I had this place as a book reading area. There were bookshelves here with books and tables and chairs. You can come in, read, and just enjoy the calmness of the area. Unfortunately, the residents of the vault started getting a little annoyed. There weren't more entertainment. They were getting a little depressed, angry, so I decided to just scrap this whole area as a book area, book reading, and just turn it into a casino to get their uh, happiness up. It worked, but I think we lost something in the process. Now it's just a, now it's just a dirty little casino area. No offense to all the people who who enjoy it. So yeah, unfortunately that there's that, but then down here. This is the bathroom. Now, this is where those who come and stay at the, at the uh, Institute and stay in one of our hotel rooms without a bathroom, this is where they come to do their business. They can shower, go to the bathroom, get fresh towels, uh, you know, wash their face, uh, their hands, uh, everything. This is, this is their bathroom. Originally, I had this as a storage area, but then when I realized, oh, wait, hold on, some of these people don't have bathrooms, uh, I decided, you know what, I'll just, uh, I'll just turn this into a bathroom. And so it is. And then after that, we have arrived back in the main atrium, where we actually see people again. So, yeah. Remember people, yeah. If, if they're wearing a vault suit, uh, that means they were originally vault residents before this got turned into an institute. If they're wearing uh, institute uh, outfits, uh, that's because they were originally from the institute. Uh, who... Yeah, it's annoying. That happens all the time around here. But yeah, if they were institute si were institute garbs, that means they were originally institute scientists who survived and came here. And if they're wearing Vault Tech lab outfits, that means they are a part of the institute, but 
they came after when they became the new institute. And with that, we have completely explored the new institute. Honestly, this is one of my favorite builds ever because I really like the lore that went into it. Like the whole idea that the Institute, uh, you know, those those people survived. Uh, they turned to the Minutemen for aid, uh, and we were like, okay, we'll allow you to rebuild the Institute, but you have to do it uh, under our guidance. Uh, gotta love the fall. Yeah, we kept the free soda. But anyway, so we we're like, you can rebuild the Institute. Uh, you can, you know, continue it on, but it has to be under the watchful eye of the Minutemen and our new. Adorable Institute leader, Kiri. She is such a doll. She is so cute. <clears throat> Do you need something, Monsieur? How are you doing? I must confess, I am missing you. Aww. I hope you've come so we can travel again together. Hint, hint. I'm sorry, Kiri. You're needed here. Never mind. As you wish. Oh, she's so disappointed, but she's doing so much good work here. You know, she's doing so much good work. She's leading these people to a brighter future so yeah that is my settlement tour for the new institute uh, situated here in vault 88 uh, i hope you all enjoy this and if you do enjoy it like and subscribe down below helps out the channel helps out me and just so you know i have two other areas that i have pretty much complete uh, that i would love to show off to all of you in more videos and as a little incentive i can even tell you where they're both located they're both located on the island in Far Harbor. So, if you want to see them, maybe like and subscribe and tell me down in the comments. I would love to. Or, tell me what area you want me to build up next, and I'll try and build something cool with there. Don't know how long it'll take. This, this one took me a little bit. But, hey, I'm confident I can do it. Are you? Delicious. And you get free soda. So, until next time, people, ta-ta, and goodbye for now.